welcome back. Today I am installing the Max Track 4. Sorry, I'll start over again. Today I am installing the 2 4 drop from Max Track onto my 2017 Dodge Ram 1500, the Fiat 1500, the Fiat Ram 1500. It shouldn't take long. I'm going to do my best to do an install video for you guys. So if you guys are thinking about doing it, you can watch this and it can help you. I'll show you everything I have that I got. And I'll do my best to leave links in the description. So first and foremost is the Max Track uh, lowering kit, 2-4 lowering kit. It, come, it came in two different boxes. One box had the springs and some other things with it. And then the other box had the shocks. Like the front came in one box and the rear kit came in a different box. And it all came at the same time, which is good. And I got some Moe's performance stickers I gotta give away sometime. But here's the kit. Instructions. Like this is the rear kit, and then the front is the struts. Sway bar bracket. I'm sorry, pan high, bra pan high bracket. Sway bar links. Bolts. Sleeves, bushings, whatever you, what do we got here? I also have, you know, I went out and bought a, a spring compressor. The cheap one, it's like 40 bucks. I got this at AutoZone. Hopefully it works. I got the uh, Viking shocks for the rear because the rear shocks I heard that come with the Max Track kit aren't the best. So I kind of upgraded and got uh, Viking adjustables from Moe's Performance. I'll put the link down there as well for these. These things are. These things are just really nice. It's gonna look sweet under there when it's all done. It's gonna look sweet. So I got the Viking shocks. I got the Hellwig uh, rear sway bar. I'll do my best to pronounce ours. But up here, you know, if we were talking and you're from Boston too, I'd say sway bar. Sway bar, that's what it is, dude. I'm gonna hang this up in the shop too. Some Moe's Performance uh, banner. And this is the Hellwig New Hellwig uh, poly bushings for the um, sway bar. And then I got the Spone. I got this from Moe's as well. The Spone adjustable pin hot bar. I'm just thinking in my head. It's somebody on the, one of the comments asked what the size was on center with it reduced all the way. So I'm going to actually take a time out and reduce that and comment for him. Because it's been like a week. I was going to do this last week, but it rained. And it was like 90 96% humidity in here. It's 89 right now. It's hot. I got the dehumidifier going. Problem is, this is all dirt behind that wall. And it's cold dirt. And when it gets humid, it just... I got to finish this barn. All right, this is everything I need. Um, oh, also, I got these from Amazon. I'll put the link down below as well because I tow. And I'm going to stick these in the coils to help uh, with towing. Or if I put any weight back here, it just... Tss, and they fill up and they're, they're airbags. Airlifts. I'm putting those in as well. And a big, huge shout out to Maxi Built. Maxi Built is his Facebook name. On Instagram, you can find him at Mopar underscore Maxi. Mopar Maxi on Instagram. He's um, been very communicative with me because he did this same setup, pretty close to the same setup on his fourth gen. I think he just did it on his fifth gen. So he's been helping me out. I've been asking him questions. Just hints. It's always good to get tips when you're doing this stuff. This is my first time dropping a truck. I've always lifted all my trucks. Every single truck I've ever had, I lifted. And this is the first truck I kept stock. And now I'm lowering it. It's going to look sick, man. I want a street truck, and this is, uh, this is what's taking place. So this is everything. Let me get started. I'm doing the front first. I'm going to jack this thing up and um, take the wheels off and get to it. All right, I'm going to measure this now. I reduced it all the way. The uh, spawn pin hot bar from Moe's. So I'm going to give you guys the dimension roughly within a 16th, uh, within a 32nd. You know, I don't have a caliper that big. So but let me give you an idea of what the measurement is uh, on center, hole to hole. You're looking at about 32 7 eighths. 32 7 eighths on center. At 32 and 7 eighths on center. There you go. All right, got my country music playing over there. Yeah, up here in Boston, we listen to country. All right, I got jack stands. Save your soul, save your life, man. Jack stands, save your life. Jack it up, jack stands. 
Don't be stupid. And just use a jack. They, <laughs> it's not smart. All right, popping the wheels off real quick. This tire over. I'm gonna wash them too, I think. Now the right side. I'm now removing the front sway bar end link bolt on the bottom, I'm holding it with my little vice grips and uh, using 11 16 which is tight because I don't have an 18 mil open it wrench for some reason. All right, we got this loose. I used some PB blast on there a little bit. And the instructions say to pull out the, the, the bolts right out on the lower control, the lower sway, uh, the lower control arm. I talked to Maxi Built. All, what he did was, because he only had 17,000 miles on his truck. My, I got 45,000, so I'm hoping this works. I'm just gonna drop this nut on the upper spindle ball joint and the tie rod end ball joint to release and let this come down because that could be a lot of work and I don't have sockets that big and I'd just rather do it this way. It seems like an easier way. If it works, this will be in the video. If it doesn't work, I'll most likely delete it and you'll never even know I even said this. So let's give it a whirl, see if it works. It will save a lot of time. Let's do it. All right, before I forget, because I want to make this thorough as possible, the nut that was on the uh, sway bar link, 13, I'm um, sorry, 11 sixteenths. The nut on the upper spindle ball joint, 13 sixteenths. And the reason why that one was so tight in the front is because it hasn't been loosened since the truck was made and it was just covered in road grime and rust. So, a little bit of rust. So that's that, I'm taking this off right now. And I believe this one as well is, yeah, 13 sixteenths. All right, got that off. And I'm gonna do the tie rod end bolt. All right, got that one off. I'm gonna give these things a little tap. All right, tie rod end came right out. I just tapped the knuckle a little bit and it released nice. I'm going to put that up there nice and gentle like, make sure there's no washes or nothing falling out. And I'm going to give this a tap as well, and hopefully this will drop out. This will all come down and make it way easier than taking those things out. Just a good idea. I'm surprised the instructions don't tell you to do this. But if your truck got 80,000 miles on 100,000 miles, this, you're going to have a difficult time getting that out. If you're doing it this way, just give the knuckle a couple wax here. A 5-pound beater, 2-pound beater, or I got a 22-ounce east wing I use for work. There you go. I put a jack under it just because when it was all the way down, that was pivoting too much. So I just, you know, came up about an inch, not too much. You don't want to, you don't want your jack stands getting weird. So wow, this is great, man. This is disconnected. I disconnected the upper ball joint, all this room to take that strut out. I'm now going to remove the three bolts at the top of the strut. I'm going to throw some PB blast on there. Let me loosen those up and this strut's going to come right out. So far, so good. Everything's been, even these uh, strut tower bolts, aren't extremely tight, you know. A little jerk and they come right out. Heads up, I forgot to say it. 15 mil on the three bolts on the top of the strut tower. Now I'm doing the lower. This is 15 sixteenths socket there. 13 sixteenths on the other side of the strut bolt. Huh, even better, dude. Bolt's out, it is loose. All right, All right strut's out. Strut is out, man. This little area right here and that stupid bolt now i gotta compress this thing and take the center bolt out and remove the strut let me get this other one on and i'll start uh compressing you know tightening each side a little bit a little bit at a time to slowly compress this thing it's a slow process i finally got the nut off that's hot i'm gonna take the strut and according to these grooves uh, with the instructions you know stock height is a groove for stock height then there's a groove for a two inch drop. I gotta put the C clip, the clip ring in right here. Put this in and then this sleeve that goes over it to keep it from opening because this is gonna determine your ride height. All right, and for these grooves, this is a little chart you got. So I got a 2017. Stock height is 
and it grew three. If I want to drop it down two inches, go back to, see, 2017, two inch drop, I gotta bring the ring to group six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this groove from that groove is two inches. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. I got that snap ring in there. I wanna make sure it's seated well too. I don't know where I put my hammer. Just make sure that thing is seated in there. And then this um, snap ring cover, retaining cover goes on here. Right over it. And take the lower coil seat without scratching your shaft and stick it on top of the retaining clip cover and that's your new height. And if I line it up with the shock, it's a, about a two inch difference. And I'm using the stock bump stop that's going back on this shaft as well. Now I gotta put the coil, my compressed coil back onto this new setup. Rotate this, here we go. So it's hitting it. Take the factory strut top, put it over that. Comes with the new M14 nut. The three quarter, you can use 19 mil. It's, it's a little loose, but it works. So I'm just trying to get this on fully enough because I'm going to decompress the spring and then use the impact gun to finish it off. I hate doing these things, dude. Sketchy, sketchy, sketchy. All right, starting to get close here. I don't want it too tight because I won't be able to clock it. All right, I'm good up top. And down below, I have to rotate this a little bit so my mark lines up with the mark I made in the stock one. All right, spring is decompressed. These things are actually, I thought they were going to snap already because they're from AutoZone, but they're pretty good. 40 bucks. I don't like how thin this is right here, but they're pretty heavy duty. They didn't really bend much. They bent a little bit, which was scary. But they didn't bend that much. Now I'm going to use the impact gun to just finish this bolt off. That's it. Uh, probably one too many Ooga Doogas, but it got tight and it went Ooga Dooga, So it's, it's in the Ooga Dooga family of reliability. So that's good. That ain't going anywhere. And that is your assembled strut. Let's pop this back in. All right, get the strut back in place. Line the top bolts up. Tighten them up. Strut, lower bolt is on, the up is a Titan, just to the lower, and that strut is assembled and installed. I'm gonna reconnect the sway bar link, push that back in, and then drop the tie rod in the ball joint. All right, front sway bar link joint is tight, tie rod and joint tight, not too tight, but tight, and the upper ball joint. I'm gonna put the wheel back on and do the other side. I'm not gonna do a video on the right side because it's the exact same thing, just the opposite. And I don't wanna, I don't want this video to be two hours long. Echo, play another song. Man, it's playing a sleep music. What's wrong with you? All right, I'm gonna drop this thing down, turn it around and go do the back. All right, front's done, it's nice and low in the front. I like it, Fills in the wheel going nice. And I'm gonna jack the rear up. And take these wheels off and get to it. I got the rear end up. I have the jack stands on the frame because I have to adjust the height of the pumpkin, the rear axle. First step for this is unbolting the uh, track bar, pan hot bar, bolt there, the top bar there, and then the sway bar, the links top and bottom, and the shocks are coming on as well. Taking the rear inner fenders out, fender liners. Oh, there's a hidden screw behind here. All right, there's a hidden screw if you got fender flares. If you don't, you're not going to worry about it, but I do. All right, track bar's off. Pan hard bar, whatever you want to call it. Rear sway bar link. Sway bar end link is off. Oh, well, the right side didn't want to come off like the um, left side did 
with the impact saw. So I'm gonna do it by hand. All right, both sway bar and links are removed. I think the new one comes with a bolt for the shorter um, sway bar and link. I don't think we're using these little balls. Now to take the shocks off. Wasn't kidding about that upper shock bolt. Wayne Richard, shout out to Big Wayne. How you doing, brother? I got it out. PB Blast is your friend. Shock is out. Wow, there's literally one spot that rasher can go on the driver's side, and it wasn't even seated fully. I barely snagged it. Left driver's side shock out. Oh, I hit the e-brake line a little bit, but this stuff's strong. It's fine. I'm now gonna lower the axle and remove both rear coils. Don't laugh at my jack, man. This thing's old. I do need a new one. The trolley wheel bearing just popped out. All right, these rubber tops and the coils, I'm gonna transfer over to the new coil springs and put those in. I'm now lifting the axle up to close the distance so I can get the shorter springs in. I am removing the bump stops in the back. Um, I'm gonna keep them. And you know, if I hit or have problems, I can always grab it and cut it in half later on. Before I forget, I gotta put my airbags in because I do tow and I wanna make sure you know, I don't have any issues. My trail is kind of heavy. It's an old steel frame, double axle, so. This is for a Durango. So in the Durango, they tell you to poke a hole in the bottom, rub a diaphragm. On the bottom of the spring seat, this is metal. So I'm gonna point mine up because we have a hole in the top of the tower for the line to run through. It's very simple. I'm just gonna stick them in the spring and run the lines up and down and then run a nipple off of it to fill it up. All right, I'm about to put these Viking shocks on. I'm not using the Max Track shocks, so if you get this kit and it has the sleeves, you get to press into the bushings on the stock ones. You don't have to if you get aftermarket shocks, but if you do want to use those, just follow the instructions. It'll tell you how to press it in. It's easy. But these things, man, these are these are really nice. I mean, in a simple term. They're absolutely gorgeous. All right, I got the airbag in, pointed up all the way down with the safety disc and the lines coming up. And I'll route that later on. I'm gonna throw the shocks on right now using the stock shock bolts. You want your dilly challenge? Getting that nut back on. That's a challenge. This plastic crap over here for the fuel lines is so sharp. Look at my hand. Can you see that? A lot of four letter words. All right, left shock is in. All right, so these Viking shocks, which are absolutely gorgeous, they're uh, hitting the bracket down here. I'm just gonna get my grinding wheel and just grind about a, I don't know, 16th down. So I'm gonna paint that so it doesn't rust. Viking shocks are installed. Again, I grinded down the bracket a little bit, a good sixteenth of an inch, so the housing of the shock wouldn't rub against the bracket. And painted it. See, now I got about a sixteenth inch clearance there. Now to assemble. Well, taking the uh, rear sway bar off, I got the hell wig, so I'm gonna take those bolts off next and install the poly bushings and the new short uh, sway bar links that came with the uh, max track kit and the pin hard bar all right i'm getting ready to install the pin hard bar track bar same thing i'm making the adjustable spoon uh pin hard bar the same length as the stock one and i'll adjust it later because you turn this knuckle when it pushes these out or in depending on which way you turn and over here they give you a drop down bracket for the pin hard bar so they have this winged bolt that goes through that window right there on the stock housing and goes through that hole right there 
like that. Use your stock wing, winged nut and stock bolt. And I took the sleeve off the one they gave me. I'm gonna put it through here. You put the sleeve in there because when you wrench this, you don't want it closing up. The sleeve keeps it from closing and it'll stay tight. I got the winged nut on and that wing is to keep it from, uh, keeping the nut from spinning so you don't have to put a wrench on it. And I'm just leaving it loose for now. Threading on the 3 8 nut. Now I gotta drill a hole, a 3 8 hole, through the bracket into the stock bracket, and I have to install these, uh, this 3 8 bolt. Let me get some more room here. It's always good to uh, keep your drill bits lubed, especially drilling through steel with these black bits. If you don't lube them, it takes longer and it kills the bit. There you go. Well, that's going to be fun trying to get the <laughs> bolt inside there. Oh, my big fingers don't like doing this. And they're telling me just to, you know, snug it. Don't tighten it yet because you got to tighten it when it's down. And they give you a new bolt for the left side. I adjusted this to factory length. But I have to adjust this anyways right now in order to find this hole up. No, I don't have the, oh, it's over there. Yes, it's over there. It's way over here. My pan hard bar is on. I had to adjust it to make it fit. I had to open it, you know, open up the length a little bit. But those bolts are not tight. They're loose. I have to tighten those when I drop the truck down. Bounce in the bumper a little bit. Um, I am dropping the sway bar right now. I'm getting ready to install the Hellwig sway bar. And it does come with new brackets. And there's poly bushings in the brackets. And goodbye stock rear sway bar. The Hellwig sway bar is significantly heavier than the stock one. Probably because it's more heavy duty. I would say at least three or four pounds heavier than the stock one. If you take it off like I did, rotated it and forgot which way it goes, if you look at it in this profile, see how that's straight and the center's bent down? That's how it goes back on. I'm gonna use the Hellwig brackets that they gave me, poly bushings, and stick them exactly the way they are on the stock bar and then install it. I have the Hellwig uh, rear sway bar on. I'm gonna do the end links right now. Here are the shorter sway bar, rear sway bar links that come with the Max Track kit. They give you new bolts and washers for that. Rear sway bar comes with three hole settings. The outer hole is phenomenal average driving and as you go in it gets tighter and firmer. I'm gonna go in the middle just to see how it is. I wouldn't mind it a little firmer. It's a street truck so you know what I mean? We'll start there. Washer, washer, and a nut, nylon nut, nuts in your face. Again, I'm gonna go in the middle. That is short, huh? Everything is all set. The only thing I gotta do is, you know, put the wheels on, drop it down, and tighten the pin hot bar bolts when I get that situated. But here's the shocks, the Viking shocks are in. Those core four by four I already had before. Airbags are in, I rooted them in the back individually. I mounted them right there next to the license plate. <laughs> yeah, you know why that four by four post is there? Cause I don't want to die. I don't really try, I mean, jack stands are good, but a little added support never kill anybody. But the lack of added support kill people. You know what I mean? Oh, in case anybody wants to know the tubing right there for the uh, bags, zip tied and roots out of the way. I'm gonna put the tires on, drop it down, then adjust that bone pan hard bar. All right, getting the fender liners back in is always so fun. That wasn't so bad. All right, fender liners are in. I'm gonna slap the wheels on and uh, drop it down. Just the last look before I put the wheels on. I got the wheels on and I squirted the axle again. I used rust reformer that extends stuff and cleaned it up a little bit. 
looks pretty good. And this is from the front. You're not really gonna see much. I mean, you'll see a little bit of the core four by fours, but you're not gonna see the Viking shocks at all. You'll see the airbags a little bit through the wheels. Just a little edit. Uh, after talking with Maxi and Matt Pickett, the drop down bracket they give you for the Panhide bar seems to be way too low. So I took it off and put it back to the stock location. Because I have an adjustable spoon pan hard bar, I'm allowed to do that. Because with the kit, they're expecting you're going to use your stock pan hard bar. Reason why I did that, because the bracket had it really low and it was about an inch away from my sway bar. And when I jacked the frame up and let the axle drop, it hit it, it touched it, and I didn't like that at all. And to adjust this, I measured from the inner bolt that holds the fender liner on each side and used a straight edge on my wheel and measured from that bolt out on each side and adjusted this until it was the same dimension on each side. And right now I'm just tightening the nuts on the spoon bar. So let me show you what I did. Get a straight edge. In this case, it's a level. I held it on the tire. Touching the tire, both sides. And then measured from that bolt, which is on the frame, to the edge of the level on both sides. And I had to go back and forth a couple times, jump on the bumper, you know, let it settle every time you adjust it. And I got it where I want it. It's the same on both sides. Mine, in this case, with these rims, it's 15 and a quarter strong distance on both sides. And now I gotta tighten the pan hard bar bolts with the weight down. that it doesn't dip the nose doesn't dip down when you nail the brakes you do feel the bumps a little more I would say 25% more 20% more and that's and that's expected now this kit uses the front springs which is nice it just kind of squeezes them a little bit so that part still feels pretty stock I'm gonna let this settle for a week I have to get uh, an alignment soon you know in about a week I'll get an alignment <laughs> The front end doesn't go up as much. But what I'll do is I'll give a review in a few months and tell you how I really feel about it. This is just, you know, day one. All right, guys, there you have it. Two, four, drop. Uh, on a scale of one to 10 for difficulty, it's probably like six. Uh, you gotta, you know, I have just basic tools. I don't have all the crazy tools everyone else got. It would be better on a lift for sure, but I'm happy with it. I'll do a review uh, in a few months and see how I really feel about it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace.